Roxo Media House. Jeff Wilson started covering the Texas Rangers in 2008, though he'll never forget 2021. Out on his own, he decided it was time to do a podcast, but his wheels were spinning until a nerd came along. There's no going back now. Welcome to the Texas Rangers Baseball Podcast. Here's your host, Jeff Wilson, and the recliner nerd himself, John Moore. Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Rangers Today Baseball Podcast, which is the new name that we're going by now, dealing with Rangers Today right now. This is episode number 45. Jeff, that's five away from 50 today. Good math. Texas Ranger first baseman Nathaniel Lowe is going to be joining us from Seattle, where the Texas Rangers are taking on the Seattle Mariners. We'll get to him in a little bit. We've got to go to the big league team right now. Okay. 43 and 52, three and seven in their last 10. I don't think this has been a great (laughs) week since they've come back from the All Star break. They've lost one. Um, They're 20 games back now and eight games back of the wild card, which I think we've kind of figured that. But. It's not great in coming back, so it, it, it's maybe answering some questions at deadline, maybe not. I don't know. I don't. I don't see big sellers here, but uh, uh, yeah, they don't have a lot to sell. I mean, everybody wants to wants to tr- say, "Oh, we got to." You know, the Rangers need to trade Martin Perez. You know, high value. The the team needs to do it. I don't think they need to do it. First no. of all, because their farm system's so good, right? Know, and you're not going to get a, a a team's top prospect for them, right? So. And, and with the way the pitching staff is looking at the minor leagues this year, they're probably not going to be much of a help next year, at least to start the season. So you're going to need pitching anyway. Right. So why not keep the guy who just went to the all-star game? You know, and and all right, you think it's a fluke he's never done it before? Okay, fine. What, what if he reverts back a half a run in his ERA or even a full run? Yep. It's still a pretty good serviceable veteran pitcher who everybody seems to like. Yep. Who wants to be here, who loves the organization. Loves the area, loves the media, talks to and, everybody. Um, he's just he's just a good fit, and and you you know he's making four million this year. Now he probably would be the best left hander on the free agent market, or one of. So that you know his agent is is aware of that and would probably yeah. you know <laughs> you think think that would bump up his <laughs> bump up his, his his salary a little bit. But uh, I mean, if you give him twelve million a year, that's a what two hundred percent increase. Yeah, uh, it's a that's a pretty pretty good raise. It's more money he's ever made. I think that that would probably be what what would keep him here. But back to the trade deadline. You've got Matt Moore. He's probably, right now, I would think he's the most attractive trade piece, a left-handed reliever, go multiple innings. He's been really good. He's a rental. Yeah, rental. Mm -hmm. They're all rentals. Cole Calhoun, rental. Yeah. Uh, Garrett Richards, rental. So, I mean, that's that's pretty much it. And you're not going to get a lot for those guys. Yeah. You know, so um, I would expect that somebody gets moved. And then I expect that the Rangers will, will... Make one deal. Active, I- actively try to acquire a player. Right. And, and again, this farm system has the talent to do it they yep. ha- and, and the depth. They they can make any trade out there. They could make a trade for any player. And um, that's how good the farm system is. Yeah, and I I, I kind of agree with you right there. I just don't see – I think they, they're they active. I think they're on the phone right now. I think Chris Young, John Daniels – we know Chris Young's in charge right now. John – JD obviously signs off on all of this. His phone's going crazy. They're going back and forth, but he's he is well, he's proven so far. He's not just going to give someone away. I mean, they would have to woo him over for someone like Martin Perez. I really think there's a you know Martin Perez is one guy. You, you hear about hometown discounts. He might be a guy that seriously considers that. Not huge. Don't get me wrong. Money is going to talk. Mm. But this is a guy that does love it here. You brought that point up. He, this is where he grew up. He went away for a few years. He loves it here. He. 12, 12 million, three years, 36 million, maybe even up to 40 at the most. Um, you know, that's not bad for at least if he's at worst your back end rotation guy. Well, John Gray's making 14 million. So, and, and I, he's you know, not going to go above John. Yeah. They're basically the same age. Yep. You know, I, I think John Gray's a little bit younger, but, um, you know, Martin has, has more miles. At what at what point do we say it? Um, you were you were talking about John. You John Gray's the same age. Is that when that's when it went? Yep. Okay. Uh, they're basically this. John Gray and Perez are basically the same age. I think Gray's a little younger. He has less mileage on his arms. Uh, but I mean that's that's kind of the ballpark, man. And, and again, the Rangers. If you look back at their recent history, uh, you know Mike Miner. He got like three years in 20, 28, 27, somewhere in there. Um, uh, Lance Lynn got three and thirty. Uh, Kyle Gibson three and thirty-two. 
and they became all stars. So maybe that's maybe that's your barometer right there. Right. Um, but I I think that where the Rangers are financially now, they could afford a little more. Uh, Perez definitely deserves a nice raise. So I I think an extension is much more probable than a trade. Okay. So we got to get into this. Uh, the deadline was yesterday. They did not do anything on the international draft, uh, which means as of now, and, and I, I, I guess it's official now, there will be qualifying offers and there will be draft compensation, just yeah. like the Rangers had to go through, who, by the way, turned that into a coup this year in right, what they got their right. two first-round signings. Uh, this isn't good for the players. I know that they've got to get on the, – the, I know the international, they wanted 260 million overall pool, draft pool is what they're trying to get. Owners offered 190 for an international draft. They didn't get it done. Now there's going to be qualifying offers. This does hurt free agents. Sure it does. And and that that was the whole that was the thing that set them off in the last CBA. Right. Was the qualifying offer. And they they had an opportunity to fix it and they didn't do it. So um that that one's kind of on them, you know. Yeah. Um but anyway, yeah, qualifying offers are a stigma for for players. Uh, you know, Ian Desmond was one of the very first ones with the Rangers. You know, he ended up having to sign one year, eight million dollar deal when he was looking for you know, five and 70, which is what he got the next year after he had a great season and didn't have the qualifying offer attached right. anymore. So, you know, it, it'll, it'll shape a lot of things. You know, it may shape the way, the way the Rangers attack free agency, you know, do they, do they want to surrender to again? What happened this year is never going to happen again yeah. as far as the draft and, and how lucky they got. Um, so I, I don't know, but it's, it's a stigma, you know, could the Rangers not do anything with Perez and make him a qualifying offer? One year, it's going to be like $18 million. Right. You know, would he take that? Would he want coming off his best season to maximize his value and get a multiple-year deal? Maybe. Do you want to take that chance? Eh, I don't know. So, yeah. um, anyway, just do it now. Well, you know, and let's let's be honest. Perez gone, it doesn't make no difference. We now have Dallas Keuchel in this organization. <laughs> uh, anyway, that news came down yesterday. For those that, that, that rolled their eyes or whatever – there is no loss here in trying this out. But yeah. in the AAA rotation, worst case scenario, he's eating he's eating innings there while he tries to figure out what's going on. He costs the Rangers nothing. Yeah, no risk. <laughs> nothing. Uh, he's I, a, I, I think he's a Cy Young Award winner. He's a, they have to pay him the prorated portion of the minor league min, of the major league minimum. Right. Which at this point, with two months to go, is under you know is about three hundred thousand. It might even be less than that because sure. I think the D backs are having to pay that. So I, I don't know how all that works, but right. they're they're just not using any money. Exactly. And um, you know, he still thinks he has something. That's fine. And maybe, maybe a new set of eyes, maybe the pit the you know, Doug Mathis and Bern Cigar can can figure something out that'll help him out. He's lost a lot of velocity. I mean, he never had a ton anyway, but exactly he lost what he had. <laughs> he's he's been too hittable. Uh it's kind of, you know, it's kind of a Colby Allard situation. He's got to be pinpoint location to be yeah, at his best miss. with that yeah. velocity and um but he can do it because he's been a Cy Young winner he's been a great one of the best pitchers with, in the AL the last seven velocity. or eight years right exactly mm-hmm. just by hitting spots and changing speeds and um yeah hey big deal yeah you know it, no it, kidding it cost you nothing absolutely nothing to to pick <laughs> this guy up well and on the other end of that spectrum uh today Word came out. Kumar Rocker has officially signed. Yeah, uh, five point two. I th- we all knew that was happening. We know now they are in agreement with uh, Brock Porter. That's I'm assuming that's in the next day or two. They're doing physicals now or what? So understandably, yeah. uh, Kumar is going to uh, Kumar. I don't know how you say that. Kumar. 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 Kumar is going to be in Arlington next week when they get back in town. So we'll right. be at some press conference there that we'll get. Yeah, to I guess next Thursday the fourth, um, which might complicate our schedule because they have a day game the thirds and we got to figure out and we got to talk about that after this is over but no kidding um yeah you know it, it, it sounds like that would, i think they had the deal when they made the phone call you sure know, and, and and said they're going to sign him and and again he has to sign for under slot so that the rangers can sign porter right so that they have the money to sign the fourth rounder whose slot is only 560 they're going to give him four million or so right and um you know there's 2.3 million of it right there and then you know, the guys who are selected, let's say seven through 10, they're going to kind of get the raw end of the deal, but that's kind of what happens. That's just the that's way the why they drafted them. They, they talked to yeah. them and said, Hey, we'll offer you this and take and they, you yeah, they're, they're no leverage in a no leverage situation. <laughs> exactly. they, they probably had a college eligibility and just want to get going. So absolutely, um, they'll sign for a lot less than slot and that'll make up the, 
make up for the the, the remainder of, of what the Rangers need to pay. So, look, and there's another thing that could happen before we get out here and get low on here. Um, another thing that could happen, this roster could look different after the second. Let's say they don't make a lot of big deals. There are some end-of-the-roster guys that may just be um, expendable to try to get some kids back up. I think eventually they do want to see some starting pitching towards the end of the year, at least have a chance, maybe yeah. against somebody. But even some bats. I mean, I love Culberson to death. I, I, I love uh, – some of those guys that are at the bottom and the low end of that spectrum, but there are a couple of guys that, that probably aren't long on the roster, I think. It's possible. Yeah, you know, this is kind of uh, historically when the Rangers have made a lot of roster decisions here right after the trade deadline and say the first couple of weeks of August. Uh, that's where Brock Burke got called up in 2019. Jose Trevino, the day after the deadline in 2019, got called up. They released uh, as Drupal Cabrera. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I would I wouldn't be surprised, you know. Now who do you who are you going to call up? Well, Sam Huff's on the forty man roster. Um, boy, it sure seems like Bubba uh, Thompson. Bubba Thompson, a case. very very deserving. Uh, Cole Reagan's, who's we'll talk about in the minor league segments. You know, he's he's definitely pitched the best of any Rangers upper level prospect. Exactly. And, and there is still the Cole win thing, but I think he needs to do a little bit more. But Owen yeah. Wide, who's at Double A, but yeah, he needs I don't, more. They're I don't not going to. I don't see that. They're either. not going to mess with that this year. But anyway. There, there will be roster turnover, turnover, I would expect, especially if this road trip yeah. keeps going in the toilet. I mean, they're you know at Seattle right now, two and, two and three on the trip right now. Right. How, how far under 500 are they now? Nine games? They're nine games. They're 43 and 43. Yeah, I mean, they're three. definitely out of the playoff contention. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah, and there's too much to make uh, up. I mean, yeah. but they, they still have a chance to come get closer to 500 and play a lot they better do. ball. They do, but they also have a chance to really – hone in on 2023 exactly since that's kind of been the target day all along sure exactly and you know in 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 moving those you talked about cole calhoun could possibly get moved and possibly even culberson might be attractive somebody he's not gonna bring anything yeah. but they might find somebody that that look to to do something there um you know the I, juan soto that's that's not happening here i don't think there's any way that's it could i mean they have the, the stuff to do it that could be one but if a cole calhoun's moved that's another opportunity right there with that 40-man spot unless the return is some sort of outfielder. That's a really good opportunity there for someone like Bubba. I think Bubba's going to get a shot. Some way or another, I think Bubba gets up here by the end of the year for a swim. I really do. I hope so. Just, I mean, they want to see what he kid. does in he's the big He's fast. Leagues. You know, he's, he's a Rule 5 guy. Uh, again, he was he was this last year. They didn't have it. Um, you know, he's got like 45 steals at AAA right now. He's hitting 300. Uh, I know they say they want the back quality to be better, but I don't know. You're hitting 300. That's pretty good at bat quality, I think. <laughs> even 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 if it's you know all right, the Pacific Coastal League offensive is inflated. Sure. Maybe he's a little bit lucky getting some bloopers, stuff like that. All right. So let's say he's hitting 280. Yeah. All right. How many people on the Rangers are hitting 280 right now? Let me let me tell you what. If he's nothing more than a fourth outfielder, he is more valuable on your team than Charlie Culberson. Sure. He's more valuable. And I love Charlie. You love Charlie. He's one of yeah. the greatest guys in the world. He is more valuable as that end of the bench guy that pinch runs in late games, gets a few starts, maybe one start a week or something like that. Yeah. This is a guy that you have control over for a long time who is a definite threat on the base paths. Yeah. And if he and he can run into a fastball and barrel it, can hit it a long ways. We've seen it. He's done it before. I don't know. He just seems like you keep say, singing his praises. I'm starting to look at the numbers. I've always liked Bubba. He just seems like a really – he's not going to be up here and be an everyday starter. I don't see it. No. I think he is a great role player, and on a contending team, that's a great guy to have as your fourth. Well, he need, he if he gets called up, he needs to play more than once a week. I mean, sure, he needs, absolutely. He probably needs 20 at-bats. And, well, on a um, team like this that's going nowhere, yeah, you do get him, get him a, yeah. a, you know three or four sure. plays a week at least. But, like, if the Rangers are a contender, you need a, you need a guy who can come off the bench, steal a base when he has to, who can play good defense and help you help you improve in the, in the late innings. And you can look back at Rangers players and they're on their best teams. That was that was basically Craig Gent, Craig, Craig Gentry, Gentry, absolutely. But Bubba has more offensive potential than sure. Craig Gentry ever had. So um, we're popping the bat for sure. Yeah, and I I think a National League team would would eat up Bubba in the Rule Five draft. I thought that this year. I think it again. You know, it, I just. Anyway, he's he's got value. He he, he, he is a he, he is a bench. Uh, look, we, we may be totally wrong. He may not be a he may not ever pan out in the big leagues. But that guy's he's deserving of a chance. Anything else? I think it's time to maybe get get, get what Nate or Nathaniel. What well, we, we can ask him. We'll ask him when yeah. he gets here. Nate Lowe, Nathaniel Lowe. He's coming up here in just a second, guys. One two. 
And that ball stroke deep out to right field. Santander is back. It's gone. Oh my! This group fights, and this group fights, and that's what we do. All right, guys, and joining us right now from Seattle, Washington, where the Texas Rangers are taking on the Seattle Mariners, it's Texas Rangers first baseman, Nathaniel Lowe, who hit a big home run last night. It was two for three. I'm going to call him Nate this time. But, Nate, what's going on, bud? Nothing, boys. Just hanging out, finished up breakfast, relaxing for a little bit, and then uh, getting ready to go to the field. All right, so game ended at like 12, uh, 10, 15, your time. Um Get back to the hotel at eleven. Go to bed. When? What's your What's your day like on a road? Um. Well, we're at, because we're on the West Coast for the whole week. I've been trying my best to stay up late. But I mean, when it's when it's eleven thirty midnight on the West Coast, it's three a.m. on the East Coast. So we you know spend a day out there in Miami and we're used to Central Time. It's just you know ain't no point in fighting it. You're just gonna pass out anyway. <laughs> the whole goal the whole goal is just not to be wide awake at 7 a.m what was was that flight from miami to oakland like the longest flight you'd ever been on like, six hours on the airplane 100 percent was the longest one i've ever done it was a good fight though i mean you know after after a win get the whole the whole team in there travel together it was a pretty good time minus a couple pitchers but it was fun yeah no that's what i told chris woodward after the after uh, he finished up his TV bid, I was like, man, it'd be pretty pretty crappy. I used a little stronger word. It'd be pretty crappy to have to make that flight after a loss. Yeah, Absolutely. yeah. Six hours six hours on the on the plane after a loss is not ideal. What do you do on the plane? How do you how do you kill six hours on a flight? I have to socialize. Uh I can't yeah, I, I can't watch a movie or binge watch a TV show. Like, you know, I, I if I'm sitting there on the airplane with you know, 25 other teammates and however many staffers and all those people there. I, I like taking it in. I, I enjoy being in it with, uh, with the guys and, and having a good time. So I'll play cards, I gamble. A bit. Gamble. Yeah. Cribbage. Do y'all play cribbage? Too, and then, uh, yeah. Yeah. What, what's the card game? You guys, yeah. you play cribbage. What yeah, do you cribbage, play? cribbage has started to make a resurgence. Oh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, there was it was a dealer's choice rotation for a little while. So we would play some we play some Boure, play some three five seven, uh, a couple games at AC Ducey. Matt Moore is not a fan of AC Ducey. Um, <laughs> and then yeah, I, I got tired of I got tired of giving money to guys who did not need my money. So you you I I did a, a program story for uh, the, the Rangers and you said you've got to hit for power. You're hitting for more power. Your your slugging percentage is up over last year. Um are you are you making do you feel like you're making the necessary strides there? Yeah, it's coming around. Um, you know, I, I obviously I wanna snap my fingers and watch all my numbers line up at the top where I want them to be, but uh that's just part of that's just part of playing 162 games, you know. Um so it's it's on a decent trend. I had a little skid right there the last couple of days and Obviously, was the the Lone Ranger in the uh, the of Oakland, the offensive route of Oakland, the other day. But there's always somebody, you know. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was nice to to put one put one together last night in Seattle. And All right. Um, okay, so we'll just pick up. Yep, just go. So, all right. So you you mentioned uh, you want to get better all around. I see you take ground balls and 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 scoops with uh, Ragsdale every every day at home. Uh, how much is defensive focus for you? Yeah, it's huge. You know, like it, it, it's kind of frustrating because I, I feel like I haven't still fully pieced together like a complete game. You know, like I I, I have a chance to make two above average plays on balls last night and you know like the balls hit hard but it's a big leagues like I, I'm capable of making these plays whether it be taking a drop step and, and catching the ball or diving to my right and making an outstanding play like it's it's pretty annoying to obviously over halfway halfway through so 
So yeah, it's definitely something that uh something that's on my focus because playing better defense is what's going to help this infield play better and the infield plays better then we're going to play better baseball. So, you know, it's um I I don't want to give it a number percentage wise, but it's definitely a conscious thought when I come to the field. Sure. Uh, you you talked about th- this team, they're five and 22 in one run games. I don't know if you guys look at that record or if every loss is the same loss. How close do you think you guys are though? Um, you know, like I didn't know it was that bad. I didn't know we played 27 one run games in the first place. Um, (laughs) but you know, it's just, it's just part of, part of playing baseball, you know, regardless of, whether you win by one or win by eight, we, we always need to score more and mm. we always need to hold them to less runs. So, you know, there's some some decisive plays that I can think of in these last couple one-run losses to where the game could have swung in our favor. And, you know, it's uh, just part of maturing as a player, part of becoming, you know, a winning team because, you know, regardless of how we feel about it, we're just not a winning team right now. Uh, it, it just seems like there's a you know a thin margin for error. I don't, I don't know if that that's a good way to put it. It just seems like you guys are close, but something gets you. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Okay. It just boils down to do we do the little things right, and are we uh, on our A game from you know whatever time you show up two o'clock until you get on the bus and and leave and go to the hotel. And obviously some of that is coming out in the wash with our record in one run games. You know, I think they should call the little things, big things (laughs) because they collectively are, they're important. And, and teams always say it as the little things. Well, let's call them the big things. Yep. Maybe they're, maybe it has more meaning. I don't know. Anyway, (laughs) that's just me being a, that's you being a nerd. That's me being a word 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 nerd. nerd. (laughs) yeah yeah all right um we're gonna do a feature that we debuted with sam huff it is called kid asks the big major the big leaguer so henry Henry is the kid uh he's got he is my kid so it's pretty easy to pick him up and bring him here yep uh so henry come on in he's got some questions for you he's gonna try not to be shy this week He's going to look in the camera. He just knocked into the microphone, making a lot of noise. That's good. All right. I may have another question. Well, we're just going to go with the ones we talked about. Okay. All right. What's He's going to fire away, Nate. Say hi, Nate. Your, hi, Nate. I'm ready. What's your favorite animal? Favorite animal? Mm-hmm. I like, I oh, like a mallard. I like a Drake mallard. <laughs> wow. A duck. A I duck. duck. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Are you do you do you duck hunt? I got into water fowl two winters ago and I love it. Uh oh. <laughs> okay. So he likes to kill the ducks he loves. Go ahead. Next. What's your favorite restaurant and what do you get there? That's a good question. My favorite restaurant. Mm. My favorite restaurant in Dallas is Nick and Sam's. Shout out to Nick and Sam's. And that filet is worth every penny. <laughs> but don't sleep on the bang bang broccoli. That appetizer is fantastic. Bang bang broccoli. Bang bang, bang broccoli. So, is it a spicy broccoli? It sounds spicy. It's like, a, uh, yeah, it's like a. It, they do a really good. I think they air fry it and then put some sort of aioli on it, so it's crunchy, but it's got a great flavor, and it it tricks you into eating your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? We're gonna try some bang bang broccoli for you, yeah. boy. All right, next. Yeah. Um, what's your favorite MLB team when you were growing up? My fa- favorite MLB team when I was growing up was the Atlanta Braves. Ooh. Okay. Who was your favorite player on those Braves teams? Chipper Jones. I was about to say, I almost predicted it, of course. Too. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, there, there were so many great players coming there. I remember watching Rafael for call throw at 150 miles an hour oh across the infield. <laughs> no, I remember the uh, – the Giles and Andrew Jones in the outfield, you name it. Javi Lopez used to catch for him. And 
My right. grandma told me he made all that money because he could throw the ball back to the pitcher out of his squat and stand up, instead of standing up to throw it. So I would practice throwing out of the squat when I was a little kid. I like it. <laughs> I like that. No, I, that, so when I grew up, I'm older than you, Nate. Uh, we had WGN and TBS, WTBS at the time. So I was a Cubs and Braves fan. Sure. And we went through some lean Braves years there. So like David Murphy uh, and then... Well, Greg Maddox was during the good years, but then they got better with Smoltz and Glavin, and then Maddox. Um, pro- best game I ever seen pitch was Greg Maddox, second, yeah, best one at at Mile High Stadium in Denver, right before the strike in '94. He threw a three hit shutout at that place. Go look at the historic numbers, unbelievable hitters yard, three infield singles, never seen anything like it, and he was so dominant. And and he and he hit a home run in the game. That's so, the, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So chick stick the long ball. That was yeah, it. That's it. All right. Last question coming What's up. What's your favorite MLB player besides you and your brother? Good question. That's a good one. My favorite MLB player besides me and my brother. Hmm. Uh, Mike Brasso was one of my favorites. He plays for the Milwaukee Brewers now. Um, I am a, I am a Jared Walsh fan. I think that he's a. I think that he's a great player. Um, don't tell him, but I love watching Ty France play. Um, <laughs> you know, there's just something about something about those average drafts that kind of like you know, we're we're all guys who could have gotten lost in the mix and maybe don't have an exponential tool that makes us so special, but we're ball players and. And uh, you know, I think that I think that guys like that who have to really grind for what we have instead of having it, you know, served on a silver platter. I have a, a great respect for for that kind of player. You should you should get an elbow pad like Ty France has. Yeah, help, <laughs> help that on base percentage. Yeah. Were you excited when Jarrett Walsh hit for the cycle? Was I excited when Jarrett Walsh hit for the cycle? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, he's a Georgia boy, so. Uh, I'm, I definitely was a fan of that. And, you know, it's nice to see those of us that aren't real burners hit a triple. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, have, I have great respect for, you know, maybe it's a misplay in the outfield or whatever, but you have to sprint all the way around second base and realize like, okay, I have a shot to make it to third. And you don't really shut it down until you're, you know, three or four steps out making your slide. But that is a long way to run. And for guys like us who don't necessarily move that fast, it's a feat. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, right, Henry. We'll tell him thanks. Thanks. Thanks, right. bud. That's Henry. It, buddy. That's Ask a Big Leaguer. For <laughs> kids, Ask a Big Leaguer. That's Henry. Thanks for doing that, Henry. Anything <laughs> else before I get into mine? Yeah, go ahead. All right. I have the fun with it here because we're going to start getting into getting to know Nate Lowe a little bit <laughs> here. So, first of all, Marietta, Georgia, went to Pope High School. Graduating 2013. Did you play any other sports when you were in high school? Uh, I was a bad quarterback and a bad linebacker. <laughs> um, I was so good at kicking PATs that I kicked our left guard in the face with the football. Nice, and we nice. Decided we would go for two for the rest of the season. <laughs> <laughs> but you played. I'll, I'll never forget that. Thurs- yeah, Thursday before a JV football game. Our left guard turned around to watch me kick the extra point in walkthroughs, and I kicked him square in the face, and that was the last time we tried to kick a PAT. <laughs> um, Football powerhouse, it sounds like. I love playing basketball, but I wasn't great at it. I wish I would have golfed more in high school. <laughs> that's, yep. that's funny. When, when, yeah, when did, you, when did you take up golf? Probably my first offseason of pro ball was when I bought my first set of golf clubs. I, I You know, I had clubs. Um they were like the the starter kit that my grandfather got me when I was you know a teenager, and mm-hmm. I bought a set of tailor made irons. Nice. Got the grips put on them and had like like a left hook and thought, okay, like I'll just I'll just go out there, spend my time on the golf course, and see how it goes. And obviously now you know I've developed a habit that I'd like to keep for as long as I have a chance to walk and swing a club. So I obviously you remember the day you were traded to the Rangers, and you did you you did a Zoom call. I did. 
on the driving range. Ex okay, because I knew you were at a golf course. I just didn't know if you were like <laughs> if you'd like pulled over <laughs> from like you know the twelfth green or something and did it. But I knew you were at a golf course. I knew it. So anyway, that's gonna be okay. So that'll be a fun question we're gonna ask him about that trade when that happens here in a little bit. Sure. I want to get into college now. Did you play just for two colleges or three? Three. I did three in three years. Yeah. So originally, where'd you go, Mercer? Mercer University in Macon, Georgia. Right. It's like a community college. Is that what that no, was? It's a, it's, a, it's a school. Macon's a uh, mid-major Division One. Yeah, we were in the Atlantic Sun Conference while I was sure. there. A Sun. Carlos, yeah. first-round draft pick with the Mariners. Uh, okay. We were classmates to. I, I I did not know that. Then you went to John River State. St. John's River State University. Where the heck is that? It's in Florida. Oh, well. I... Palatka, Florida. Okay. And, if and then... Were, if you, either of you have been there, I'd be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> now, I've never say, heard of the dang thing. So, so. You, you went to Mercer. That's where you went out of high school. Did you have any other schools you that you had an opportunity with, or or that was your one? Well, a couple walk-on spots. Um, you know, I, there wasn't really anything anything that was jumping out at me and you know i i kept going back and forth with my summer coach because basically he was a feeder team for george tech and i i don't know i just didn't feel right about it my dad worked on campus at the time and uh, tech never really never really appealed to me and when mercer came through with a scholarship that's where i went ahead and committed and signed after my senior year of high school okay, okay. So then you go to St. John Rivers, uh, St. John Rivers State College. That was where you went your sophomore year. You must have done well because then Mississippi State came calling. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, I, I think that year at St. John's saved my baseball career as a whole because oh, wow. you, you know it was uh, the school is a glorified high school. Um, in Texas, it's a middle school. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was kind of at the point where I was like, okay, either I'm gonna really commit to this thing and make something happen or i'm going to uh sorry did i cut out there no you're, you're good. good okay um my mom's calling me uh Wendy. it was Wendy. either commit and really play baseball or it was go to school and have fun and get my degree and go get a job and the staff that we met at st john's was incredible they were so committed to us so committed to finding another home for us and the whole goal was obviously to get out because if you ever been to Palaka, you would know that you don't want to stay in Palaka. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and thankfully we had enough connects, and they put enough uh, put enough effort into me and and let me do my thing on the field. And uh, yeah, I wound up at Mississippi State after that. Love that's to start great. With. That's great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now this is fun. It, it, it's especially relevant after the draft just finished. You were drafted in the thirteenth round in two thousand sixteen by the Tampa Bay Rays. You were obviously not in New York or wherever for the draft. Tell me about the draft day. How did you find out you had been drafted by the Rays, and where were you? I was coming back from getting a coffee at the Starbucks on campus, or right next to campus, and it was 150 degrees already at 10 a.m. <laughs> there was heat advisories because we were playing the Super Regional game that afternoon, and we had actually lost um, – the night before to Arizona and then uh, we had thought that I was going to be an Atlanta Brave around the 20th um, kind of figured that was already in place and I was on the phone with my agent while I was walking back into my apartment and I declined a call from the Tampa area scout because I was on the phone with him <laughs> and then he said oh by the way you know tell your parents all this other stuff you just got picked in the 13th round you're Tampa Bay Ray. Um, congratulations. Have a great game tonight. We'll be out there tomorrow, and then we'll, uh, you know, get everything figured out and see where you're going to go. Anyway, it ended up working out because you ended up with your brother in the same organization, which has not happened very often. What was it like going through the minor leagues with your brother? Yeah. Um, okay. We did instructional league together when we first signed. Um, because he did the GCL and I did short season. Um, right. That was great. And then we did spring training together. We lived in a day's end together. Um, <laughs> nice. did, not, did not kill each other, which was a feat in itself. Days <laughs> in. Camp, 
we broke camp and went to Loe together to Bowling Green. And he was my road roommate when we would travel. So we were together a lot, um, you know, and, and we had our nights where maybe we're on different pages and didn't want to talk to each other, but that's part of just, you know, <laughs> being a friend and a brother. So yeah. it was sure. nice to always know, like, I, you know, I'm coming home and regardless of whether I have a good game, you have a good game, uh, we both suck or like whatever it is, I, I it was so great knowing that my brother was there and I don't have to do the form. Yeah. Yeah, man. Like, you know, I, I hope you're having such a good day today. Like I would with another teammate um, <laughs> yeah. because he's my brother, because he's my brother, you know? Sure. And then we trained together, trained together in the off season, golf together. Um, the next spring we lived together again in, in the, the hotel because that, that was the way it was in Tampa. And we went to high A together my sophomore season. And then when I got moved to double A, that was the last time we played on the same roster. So okay. yeah, it was, it was a treat um, being in the organization with him and, you know, kind of having the golden boy for the year until the new first draft pick, uh, first round pick was obviously selected. Um, <laughs> having him be related to me kind of worked to my advantage. So it, it was great. Okay, so then things changed. You got traded to the Texas Rangers. So how did you find? That's right. How did you find out? Where were you at, and how did you find out you'd been traded? Obviously, you got. He was at the driving range. Were you at the driving range when you found out? <laughs> Hang on. No, 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 no. Okay, where were you? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah go driving ahead. Driving from. I'd actually just picked up um a new pistol oh okay all right actually and i was pretty excited about it and i was driving back to my parents house or no i'm sorry Jean's name popped up on my phone you're involved in a trade all year in a second and i remember reading it going you know i'm on the phone with John Daniels and he's saying hey you know we are so excited to have you XYZ all this other stuff and then I'm getting set up with John Blitz. So, oh, yeah, okay. so you got traded yeah yeah so that all changed with you and your brother being the same system because you were traded to the Texas Rangers the question is that's right where <laughs> were you when you found out you had been traded who called you and, and what happened I had just picked up a pistol I just picked it up um and I was going back to, I don't know where I was going to, maybe my parents' house, or I was supposed to work out or something in the afternoon, and I got out a text message from the GM, said I was involved in a trade, and then I had to pull over and uh, talk to him on the phone and see what was going on, and then he told me I was going to the Rangers, so I went to work out right after that. I told my parents right away, and then... Um, I told a couple friends, and it was weird because one of my really good friends had had a fit for a while, and he kept he kept telling me, "Dude, like, you know, you're gonna play for the Rangers." <laughs> hey, yeah, sure, whatever. And then, uh, yeah, and then I talked to JD, talked to the staff. Um, yeah, uh, I got a bunch of text messages, "Hello, welcome," uh, all, all kinds of stuff, and uh, yeah, they did a great job of making me feel welcome right away when I got traded, and then I. Went to the driving range that night and then did uh, my Zoom, my initial Zoom interview with the the Texas Beat um, on yeah. the driving range. Yeah, I remember it. You remember that one for sure. Yeah, I do. Yeah. And another fun one to ask for us that never did this, it's a fun one to ask anybody that's been to the big leagues. You made your major league debut April 29th, 2019. You were with Tampa Bay at the time. So tell me about that. How did you find out you were going to the big leagues? What happened? Where were you all? And who told you? Mm, okay. We had just come off a road trip from Columbus, Ohio. Okay. And we were, I don't remember, we had gone somewhere before, but it was like 100 degree, not really 100, but it was hot, and then it was freezing cold, and the whole Durham team was trying to see the doctor. We had flu in the clubhouse, bronchitis in oh, the geez. clubhouse, you name it. Um, and we had gotten back from... We always connect in Charlotte, and Charlotte to Durham is a nightmare because it's a 30-minute <laughs> flight, and American somehow always cancels their Sunday night flight, and 
all this other stuff. And so, yeah, we, we, yeah, we get off the airplane, get to the airport at Raleigh Durham. And I was going to, I like to take an Uber because I live way closer to the airport than I did to the field. And it was, you know, 10 bucks. Yeah. And yeah, I was outside starting to go get in my car and I had it ordered and Brady Williams is my manager and pulled me back into the terminal and a couple guys were on the bus already, but yeah, you know, he told me, Hey, you know, I, you need to keep your stuff packed. You're going to the big leagues tomorrow morning. You're going to meet the team in Kansas city. Oh man. Yeah. You know, yeah. And it didn't, didn't set in like set, you know, I, I'm sure everybody else feels the same way. It feels like a dream until you're, you know, jogging back to the dugout, probably, probably like the first time you get out is when you're like, wow, I, you know, I'm, a major league baseball player and I just got out shit. So, uh, <laughs> um, now do you remember your first, uh, yeah, you know, it was surreal. Your first hit was at that game. Yeah. My first hit. Yeah. My first hit was that game. Uh, they're now closer Scott Barlow. Um, yeah, he, I hit double in the right center field gap and I think it was the hardest ball that I hit all year. And you know, I couldn't feel, couldn't feel anything running around the bases because you know you're on such a high and yeah yeah it was it was a wild feeling uh my brother had an off day and i don't know how the situation came about but i couldn't get in touch with my parents because they were in montgomery seeing him and my mom didn't know the difference between airplane mode and do not disturb so i had to call the hotel (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah, I had to call the hotel to get them to go knock on their door uh, saying, hey, look, I promise I know the people in these rooms. <laughs> it's not a bad emergency, but it is an emergency. I do need to talk to them. Yeah. Well, so, that's yeah, good. they did. I, you, I was on the phone with the dude the whole time. I said, hey, look, you need to go bang on the door, <laughs> wake them up, and tell them to answer their cell phone because, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with them. Did uh, Did they make it to the game? They did. Yeah, they did. That's okay. correct. I mean, that can't be an easy flight, Birmingham to, to Kansas City. No, I can't imagine. Uh, you know what? I, I think they found one direct. They were, they were wow. in Montgomery, drove up to Birmingham. Either, they either went Birmingham or Atlanta. And then, uh, yeah, went okay. all the way up to KC okay. and, and got to watch me play that night. And yeah. then uh, I think we got rained out the next day. So I had a day off to hang out with them. And Josh had gone all that way and uh walked in the stadium was walking down the concourse as i was on second base so he missed my first major league hit damn him brothers damn it i tell you what you can give him shit you can give him crap over there right okay Uh. you know what we've had fun here and we've kept you a long time so i just got a couple more to get out technical difficulties guys whatever you guys want okay so i gotta do this one so i want to do um three more so What's your favorite home cooked meal, and who cooks it? Does your mom? Who, who cooks you? Yes, your... my mom. My mom makes the lasagna for my birthday, and she makes it for Christmas, and that's it. And yeah, I, I don't think there's anything special, but I like it, and I think it's delicious. So we'll do like a she'll mix up a big Caesar salad and a lasagna and garlic toast, and that does it for me. And you shovel it. That's in. all I need. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Carbo load right there. You get the carbs yes. in. You get, a, you get a lot with lasagna. All right. Now, this this is coming from a guy. This is I call this the home run game. I was going to catch you outside the dugout one time. You're always friendly to sit and talk, but I'm getting asked it here and on camera, so this will even be more fun. So I call it the home run game because as a guy who played baseball through high school, um, I really wasn't that great, but I did hit one ball over a fence. We're going to talk to you about three home runs that you hit over a fence. And so I want this one's easy to remember. I'll always remember. What is the very first ball you ever hit over a fence? How old were you, and where was it? I think I was twelve. I was playing for the the Sandy Plains Trojans. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, we wore these horrible like USC knockoff jerseys because last year high school was the Trojans, and that was where you know that was like the the area we lived in, and that was our team. Um, it was a uh, probably an 8 a.m. start for a 12 year old, so my parents were loving it. Um, <laughs> yeah, and I just kind of, I just kind of dunked one over a silt silt fence in center field, and I remember just watching the ball bounce out there, and I don't remember like how I swung or whatever, but I hit it, and the ball bounced out there, and it was home run. All right, <laughs> that was it. that's the fun one. So uh, that yes. you'll always remember the first one over fence. Now the the second one is the most exciting one did you was it high school college 
minor league in the major leagues. What's the, this, what's this, the one this season where against the Angels? Was it a walk off? Yeah, maybe the, the yeah. walk off was that it. Maybe it was high school. What what's the best most exciting one yet? No, it was, a, it was the first time I ever hit a walk off home run in high school, and it was the state finals, oh. and I. I hit a grand slam to walk off game one of the three game set for the state finals. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty it was, awesome. It was incredible. Did, That's you guys, pretty... did you guys win? We did. We actually, okay. yeah, we, we played a tight one the first game and then we, I don't know, do we, I don't think we went to game three. We either lost that night and then came back and run rolled them or we run rolled them that night. But yeah, we took care of it. It was, uh, yeah. Grand slam. That's pretty grand sweet. Grand slam. That is sweet. To win it. Nice. Now, I'm thinking, I, I'm thinking I might have been here for this one, but the, the last one's the bomb, the one that you barreled that went the furthest. And how far do you think it go? Was that one you hit? Maybe in uh, was it last year that you hit uh, in center field? I mean, he hit the oh, yeah, longest I mean, he one. Hit that one in Kansas City on the Ooh. Kansas City. Yeah, Kansas City was my best bolt in the big leagues. Um, how far? Yeah. Four sixty four. Uh, Is that right? Four sixty eight. Yeah, somewhere in there. 468 yeah it was yeah i i know it was the hardest home run i've ever hit it was like one 113 and some change oh my goodness um but yeah I, i'll tell you what man i uh it's too bad that marine layer is there in oakland because i just hit one a couple nights ago <laughs> that because it was a breaking ball it was spinning right and uh yeah i hit it hard enough all right so yeah I, it, it's too bad the marine layer knocked it down because that would have been a good one thank you buddy it's nate Lowe. First baseman for the Texas Rangers joining us from Seattle. When we come back, guys, we're going down in the bus leagues. Roxo Media House is a streaming and production company located in Fort Worth, Texas. From video to podcast production and social media broadcasting, Roxo Media House strives to deliver a dynamic media experience for clients and fans. With 15 shows, we have something for the whole family. Join the Roxo Media community today. All right, that was Nathaniel Lowe or Nate Lowe joining us from uh, from Seattle. Now it's time to go down in the bus leagues. Let's talk about non league. You were out in Arizona, actually. So I tell was. us what happened out there. Josh is behind us. You saw Josh Young. We need an update on Josh Young. Yeah, he was uh, he was out there. Um, he's been out there a while. Yes. Um, he was uh, he's rehabbing, as you know, getting very close. He he's taking ground balls, uh, running the bases, hitting live pitching. Um, he did his, his first one was uh, last Wednesday, whatever day that was the 20th. Right. And, um, he hit Wednesday, four balls, hundred mile per hour exit velocity. He had two home runs Thursday. I was there Friday and, uh, there was only one guy throwing live batting practice. So, uh, they, he and Davis Wenzel alternated three or four pitches a piece. So, uh, didn't get a lot of opportunities to hit the ball. Um, I think he had one hit in three at bats or something like that sure. and walked or, you know, whatever, however you want to score it. Anyway, the guy looks fantastic. He, he's, he's looks stronger. Uh, he said he's been working on his speed. He said that he is, the plan now is for him to play defense when he comes back. Okay. Um, and I know that was something that's that, big. Cause that, that was something that, that the Rangers have said was not going to happen, but now apparently he he's under the impression that it will. I mean, he's taking, he was taking ground balls, turning double plays, doing all kinds of stuff. So, uh, he looks like he's getting very, very close. They haven't given him a date yet because they don't want him to get his hopes up in case there's a little setback or something like that. But, um, you know, the the timeline was always August, and I think it was more late August. Well, we're in July, and he's doing a lot of stuff, so I wouldn't be surprised if by uh, middle August he's at, he's with an affiliate. And I do think it's possible that he, he makes his major league debut this year. That's one bat they can add to the lineup for sure. I mean, well, that's a guy, if he, if yeah. he does what he's done, now, let's be honest. Every time that he had two, he's had two freak injuries, that sucks. But when he came back last year from the foot injury, he did everything. He went oh, at he every level he produced. Year. Yeah, huge I, year. I mean, what, it was 18 home runs, and he played just a little over half the season or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 300 at-bats. He, he finished the year on an 18-game hitting streak. Yes. He had, I think, 348 at uh, AAA. So, um, but, I mean, yeah, he's going to come up, and the Rangers are going to be out of it. It's not like he's going to come up and lead them to the pennant. No. He's going to come up and get a taste. He's, he's you know, Rule 5 eligible. Right. So you gotta, you're got you obviously going to protect him, so you're going to put him on the on the roster anyway. Right. So do it now, assuming everything goes well during his rehab assignment in, in AAA. And, uh, you know, it'd be he, he's earned it. You know, the way yes. he's attacked his rehabs the last couple of years, the way he played last year, um, you know, as long as, as long as he's hitting, there's no reason to not bring him up. 
Absolutely. And and look, the, let's be very honest. As much as uh, Duran and Smith have played some great third base, Josh Young is ahead of them. I mean, he is thought of right. higher on their radar right now, I think. It's yeah, be the third uh, yeah he's, he's a true third baseman. Duran, I think I think of those two, Smith and Duran, I think Duran's a better third baseman. Uh, Duran's just really good defensively. He's great at second base. Yeah. Um, but, you know, they're going to be hopping around. I think that's kind of what they're going to have to do in their careers, at least with the Rangers. Sure. Uh, but I think Young is 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 he is a third baseman and and will be playing third base, you know, next year. Of course, we all said that last year at this time about right. him. Right. So you never know, but um, he, he's in he's in a good spot. He looks great. So okay. Um, that's it. That's it. That's encouraging. And then I talked to I talked to a ton of other guys. Kyle Cody, Dane Acker. Uh, Kyle da- Cody. That Davis, is a name. Davis I Wenzel. I talked to four kids who are teenagers from. Latin America, um, so they they were all great speaking Spanish through interpreter. Uh, Andres Antonioni, who who was an intern for the Rangers this year in Arizona, great help. So um, anyway, good stuff coming out of RangersToday.com. Five ninety nine a month, five ninety nine a month, sixty dollars for a year. We've had we've had some people this last week sign up for the the thirty five dollar for six month package, which is a, a happy medium. I know the. I know the uh, economy is not good. We looked at our 401k today. God, God bless us. And uh, <laughs> but um, you know it's a it's a happy median. So right. uh, anyway, and it's good. To, it, give look, it a shot. I mean, you're crazy if you're not signing up. If you're a Rangers fan and you you want to know about the minor leagues too and and the history of Tr Sullivan, you're kind of crazy to not sign up for my website. Absolutely, it's no, well no worth offense. It. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, yeah. All right, let's go down. Let's go down. To, first, let's go down to low A. Everybody knows the the, the the levels. It's low A, high A, double A, and triple A. We got the Arizona Complex League now, yeah. which has started. Yeah. Uh, but let's go to down east to 46 and 43 overall, 13 and 10 the second half, 6 and 4 in their last two. They've lost two games. Um, you know, looking up a couple of names there, of course, Mitch Bratt, yeah. that we've had on here, yeah. is still doing well. Uh, Yossi Gala has 12 home runs. He's leading that. Yeah, team. Yossi uh, was. Yeah. You talked to him this uh, during the I spring. I talked to him in, in spring training. He was he he started off really well. He was a player of the week in the Carolina League early on. Went through a slump. He's I think his average is below 250, but he has the power. You know, there it's it's just getting getting. Uh, he has to hit the breaking ball. That's the that's the thing he has to learn to do. Uh, but. You know, he's built like a prize fighter and yep. um he's 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 got some real raw talent. Yep. Okay, let's go to Hickory, 48 42. Uh they're 10 and 14 in the second half, four and six in their last 10. They have won a game. They won, but they, everybody was off Monday. Or this is uh Tuesday. They better start back up tonight. You know, I, I went just to look at the numbers there. I tell you Zavala is the guy that's really coming up over there. I mean, his yeah. base on ball and uh, walks to strikeout ratio. We've known that all along, but good sure. lord, he's at 11 home runs now. He's hitting. Uh, he's got an 871 OPS. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. guy might be a double A. Yeah, the and last Acuna. the last time I talked to uh, <clears throat> Carlos Cardoza, their manager, I asked if they want Aaron Zavala to expand his zone a little bit because he's so uh, strict. You know, is he missing out on some balls he can handle and drive out of the ballpark? And and he very politely said he understood my argument, but. Um, no, they want him to stay there. They think that he can do damage in the strike zone, and and he had kind of lagged home run wise, but now he's kind of come on. He's over double, and he's into double digits. Um, he's you know he's a college he's a college guy, Pac-12 Offensive Player of the Year last year. Like you said, commands the strike zone, knows what knows what pitchers are trying to do to him. So um, I, I don't know that he's going to get promoted. It wouldn't surprise me if he does. Uh, same thing with Acuna. Of course, he's. 310, eight home yeah, runs, I mean, 896 OPS. It's, it's a matter of time. Yeah, it's a matter. Of, and for Zavala, if you think about it, guys, look, beginning of the year, this always happens no matter what. The beginning of the year in baseball, pitchers are finding their ways. They don't throw strikes. He won't hit balls. He only hits strikes. Now they're yeah. finding the strike zone. He gets to double A and sees more strikes. Sure. They may some, be some power numbers that really yeah. that really start to take off. Yeah, I mean, he's 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 got a chance. I mean, there's a reason why he's a second-round pick. Absolutely. Yeah. He stays in the zone. Okay, yeah. so, so JC is another one that has really gone up. He's hitting over 300 now. He's got 10 home runs, 862. Is that fifth-round pick. We've talked about him just about every week. Yeah. But he continues to just hit the ball there. Yeah. Interesting um, guy. Yeah, yeah a young guy. Uh, hits uh, like Josh Smith. He doesn't wear the batting gloves. <laughs> Um, and of course, Evan Carter, that's probably the biggest name there. Maybe Kuna and him, uh, one and two there, but Carter was the, the five tool guy. Everyone talks about right, right. still doing well. Nine yep. home runs, 854. All right. Frisco, Frisco. go to double a 47, 43. They're 11 and 10 in the second half. They have four and six in the last 10 and they've lost a game. Um, lighter. 
Uh, had a first start since the uh, Patriots game. Yeah, it was um, pretty good. It was so, fine. It's, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, he, he's yeah. he. You know, look, there's no worries. Uh, you know, probably some excitement there too. He's got a new teammate that's going to be joining him. That's a good buddy of his from from college. Uh, you know, I didn't look at the numbers on on, on that. I know that they lost the game. Did I mean, did he go? It was like three and a third. Or three and three a third. So they he, probably, was on a, he was on a pitch count. You know, they they got to take care of him coming off of the. Uh, he had a short. He he was on the development list. Right. So he skipped a start. Then he came back. Only went like an inning and a two thirds. Had a rough one. Then he went to the futures game. Only pitched an inning. Sure. So you know they got to protect him, build him back up a little bit. So he he was on a on a pitch count. Um. I, you know I think it was I think it was around sixty. Uh, it'll it'll go up incrementally. Look. I think one of the best things that can happen for Jack Leiter are, are the promotion of Owen White. Yep. And the and the addition of Kamar Rocker. I don't know if he and Rocker will pitch together this year, but Jack, Jack said it uh, on on draft night. You know, Kamar made him better. Yep. There's going to be a competition there, and and I think it at you know Jack is in the sorting feeling things out phase, putting the pieces together. When he does it and he yep. sees other guys doing it, it's gonna it's gonna be a boost. Hey, these pitchers work together. Look, sure. they're, when they're teammates, they they use each other to do that. And let's be honest, unless uh, Juan Soto is playing here in the next uh, month, Leiter and Kumar are probably going to be in this rotation together at the major league level. I think if Juan Soto is here, that's still going to happen. That's still going to happen. Okay, they don't have do to use Leiter in that deal. Jack they can't. And for those that have asked, I've said it a hundred times, they cannot use Kumar Rocker in a trade. I'm right. sorry, he has to go a year before they can use him. He's going nowhere. He's here for the year. Okay, so let's go to AAA. Um, any other guys nope. at AA? Not really. No, but uh, Juan Pablo Martinez got promoted. Got promoted from AA to AAA Round Rock. Triple and round he hit us for, for some run the other night. Yes, and you know what? He's his numbers a little impressive. He's starting to really figure things out. He, I think everyone had such high hopes for him. He kind of got lost in all this shuffle. Remember, yeah. he was the when they didn't get Shohei Otani, he was the number one guy coming out of that international right. class. Sure, and 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 he just did not. He kind of hit a wall there. Well, there's there. Were, I think there's a pretty big adjustment for him. Um, I from got going, LASIK surgery. He did too. this year, yeah. But going from Cuba to the United States, I don't think it's easy. No, you know? and and I know he's traveled and been in tournaments and stuff. But uh, it it he he said it took him some time to adjust Acclimate. to the culture. It took him a time to adjust to the baseball. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was better than anything he had played. Um, so. Yeah, and he did have the LASIK surgery over the off season, which he said definitely helped. So uh, good for him. You know, he steals a lot of bases. He has some power. Yep. Um, he he does a lot of things. Yeah. And he's look. He's it, the guy. There was a reason he was a top prospect. Sometimes we've seen it all before. Some of these guys blossom a little late, get sure. acclimated, and go. I did not know this. The, I this LASIK surgery really that caught me by. Well, is this a guy that was from a poor country? Maybe he didn't have, and he needed to get some clear vision there maybe know. didn't see the ball as well as a, I, I don't know but that that's intriguing but the numbers all season have been decent yeah. not not yeah. bad at all yeah. okay we go to round rock they don't do it by first and second half they're playing like the big league schedule 50 and 43 overall they're five and five in their last 10 they've won one cole reagan's had a good start yeah cold's over my shoulder yes um six innings two hits scores. eight strikeouts yeah yeah he he's uh he, he'd had a rough start i think against las vegas um but he's been great. Uh, he's, you know, and and if the Rangers are, are looking for somebody to come up from the minor leagues, that's the guy right now. He, he's he's got to be the leader in the clubhouse. I, I I know that Cole Wynn is down there, and uh, he's 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 still struggling a little bit. He's been very inconsistent, throwing throwing too many balls, and that, know, that's and, basically and walking, his walking too many guys. Yeah. Um, this is the guy, and he's he's another 40, uh, 40 man eligible or Rule Five guy. Yep. Probably at this point, you protect him. You know, yep. just the year he's had. Uh, so, you know, my, no time like the presence. You know, hey, just, look, get, get him on the 40, man. And don't put this past him. If you lose someone like a Matt Moore at the big league level and you need another left-hander to come up to kind of do that role and you don't want to use him as a starter, this is a guy right here if he ends up not being – I think he's a starter long-term. I think Reagan's is. But there are some places on this roster where some arms could be moved that some of these guys could get a chance to come up here and maybe move yeah. someone like Hearn to the bullpen – for him to come up and get the spot starts and and do the piggyback thing or do some stuff like that. Yeah, you don't you if if you know Cole, Cole Reagan's with his arm history, I don't know that you want to suddenly hey you're a reliever you got to pitch every other day you know 
you you let him stay a starter. Taylor Hearn's done it before. Your example, there are other guys who can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think if he comes up, they need a they need a starter. Then he's the starter. And I I, I guess you know we got to mention Dallas Keuchel now in that equation too. Seriously, yeah. we got yeah. to. Yes. Um, no, I mean if he figures it out, he figures it out. I mean, well, even if he doesn't figure it out, even if he's just a little bit better, you're not calling up guys who, you know, maybe are served better by developing in the minor leagues. Now, sure. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it's def- a definite option. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I think that's it. Anybody at the plate down there? Uh, you know, Sam Huff had a walk off hit the other night, and you know, I still think that he belongs in the major leagues. Um, you know, and Davis Wenzel will be coming back. He's just, he's, uh, I think they've targeted like that first is week it, of August back? back, back deal. He's, he said he had a bulging disc. He got some shots, cooled it down. And, um, I, you know, saw him bat and run and do all the things Josh Young was doing too. So, yeah. um, good guy. He's missed out on some chances just like Young has, you know, I, I think if you had asked Chris Woodward in spring training or at the end of spring training, who's the first guy that's going to get called up? Wenzel was the guy. Was Davis Wenzel. Yep, that's who uh, they thought. And he knows it, but he's he's got a good perspective on it and another Rule 5 uh, rule five eligible. So uh, a lot of a lot of those guys uh, A lot of decisions got to be made. So, uh, but Davis will be back Yep, soon. Okay. All right. All right, guys, that's it. Uh, Rangers are still out of town. They come back in next week. Uh, we'll be back here again to do it one more time. Uh, coming up on a 50th episode here in about five episodes. Yeah. Maybe we've got to do a best of or something. We'll see what's going yeah. on then. Well, but. Ne- next week will be a big one because we'll have the, the draft signings. We'll have the trade deadline. We'll know what's happened then. Absolutely. So, uh, next week a, will be a, a can't-miss show. Absolutely. And, guys, thanks to Nate Lowe for joining us. Till next week, we'll see you at the yard. Roxo Media House.